Assessment of Competency to Issue Plant Passports Module 2 Plant Passports Changes to Plant Passport System Since December 14, 2019, all plants for planting require a plant passport when moved from one professional operator to another. Plant passports now have a common format throughout the EU. Plant passports are not required for plants, plant products and other objects supplied directly to final users. There are exceptions to this. Online sales and protected zone host plants for planting must have a plant passport to the end user. All distance sales operators must be registered with the department as professional operators. The required format of the plant passport is set out in detail in Regulation 2017-2313. Plant passports must be visible, legible and be clearly distinguishable from any other information or label. As the size and characteristics of plant material can vary greatly, there's a certain degree of flexibility regarding format style and size of the plant passport. As a result, there are no specific requirements in relation to the size of the plant passport, the proportions of the different elements, the font used or insertion of a borderline. The elements of the plant passport should be arranged within a rectangular or square shape and should be clearly separated from any other written or pictorial content. It is important to enhance the visibility of plant passports and to ensure that they are distinct from any other information or label. Plant passports issued on or after December 14, 2019 must comply with the new format. Any plant passports issued before December 14, 2019 will remain valid until December 14, 2023. Regulation 2017-2313 contains a number of model formats, depending on whether the movement is within a non-protected zone or a protected zone. For a non-protected zone, the format is as follows. The upper left-hand corner contains the EU flag. It can be in colour or black and white. The upper right-hand corner contains the words plant passport. Section A contains the botanical name, Section B contains the member state code plus a hyphen plus the registration number of the professional operator. Section C contains the traceability code and Section D contains the country of origin. Examples of plant passports for non-protected zones. So to recap, what should a plant passport include? The words plant passport in the upper right hand corner the flag of the Union in the upper left hand corner, printed in colour or in black and white. The letter A followed by the botanical name of the plant species or taxon concerned, in the case of plants or plant products, or where appropriate the name of the object concerned, and optionally the name of the variety. The letter C followed by the traceability code. The letter D followed by the name or two letter code of the country of origin. And in the case of a replacement plant passport, the registration number of the professional operator who issued the initial plant passport or on whose behalf the initial plant passport was issued by the competent authority. The following are examples of plant passports for protected zones. Plant passports for movement into and within protected zones must contain the following. The words plant passport hyphen PZ in the upper right hand corner in one of the official languages of the EU and in English if different. Underneath those words, the EPO code identifying the respective protected zone quarantine pest. The EPO codes can be found at the link below. The flag of the Union in the upper left hand corner printed in colour or in black and white. The letter A followed by the botanical name of the plant species or taxon concerned, or where appropriate the name of the object concerned, and optionally, the name of the variety. The letter B followed by the two letter code for the member state where the professional operator is registered, a hyphen and their registration number. 
So, for example, a professional operator registered in Ireland would record their registration number in Section B in the following format, IE-1234. The letter C followed by the traceability code. The letter D followed by the name of the country of origin or the two-letter code of the member state of origin. In the case of a replacement plant passport, the registration number of the professional operator who issued the initial plant passport or on whose behalf the initial plant passport was issued by the competent authority. The following tables set out the conditions for the change of a country of origin for plants and trees. Possible questions and answers. 1. I have a mixed container with five plant species. How should the plant passport appear? It's possible to have more than one species on the plant passport. If you have five plant species, then follow the format of the plant passport and at point A, list the five species of plants under each other. If one of the plants is a host species for a protected zone, this must have a separate passport. Two. What will happen if I sell plants without an eligible plant passport? If you sell plants without an eligible plant passport, these plants may be intercepted and destroyed. Also, your authorization to issue plant passports may be suspended or revoked. 3. I sell plants for planting online. Do I need to attach a plant passport to these? Yes, plants sold over the internet must have a plant passport to the end user. 4. Does the plant passport have to be attached to each plant or will it suffice to have it on the delivery note that accompanies the plants? Plant passports must be attached to the trade unit of the plants, plant product or object before they're moved. If moved in a package bundle or container, the plant passport must be attached to that package bundle or container. It's no longer required to put the plant passport on the delivery docket unless the delivery docket is physically attached to that unit. 5. Do all plants need a traceability code? The traceability code is not required for plants for planting prepared for sale to the end user without further preparation. The plants for planting set out below and on the next slide, other than seeds of, require a traceability code C on the plant passport. Six, do garden centres have to apply plant passports to final users? Garden centres selling plants for planting to the final user don't have to have plant passports attached in most cases. The exceptions to this are if the final user is receiving those plants by means of sales through the internet, or if final users are receiving protected zone host plants for planting. Seven, I only grow bedding plants. Do I have to have a plant passport attached to each tray of bedding plants I sell? Yes, producers of bedding plants must comply with the plant passport rules. 8. What do I do if the plants I buy from a nursery don't have a plant passport attached to them? You should not accept plants that don't have a valid plant passport as there's no traceability with these plants and they may have to be destroyed. 9. What are two letter codes for countries? Two letter country codes are published by the International Organisation for Standardisation. They represent countries, dependent territories and special areas of geographical interest. You can view the ISO codes at the link below. 10. Do Christmas trees require a plant passport? Cut Christmas trees under 3 metres are not subject to plant passports. Cut Christmas trees over 3 metres or trees with growing medium attached must have a plant passport when trading from professional operator to professional operator. 11. Does the protected zone have to be named or is a number adequate? 
the protected zone must be named on the plant passport by using the EPO code. Since December 14, 2019, the letter number combination is no longer acceptable. Each EPO code should be included under the words plant passport PZ in the upper right hand corner. The EPO codes can be found at the link below. 12. Do all plant varieties need to be on a plant passport or is species adequate? The botanical name can consist of the genus, the genus and the species or the genus and the species and the cultivar. 13. If the plant I'm selling is a host plant for more than one protected zone organism, what will I put on the plant passport? You should include each of the respective EPO codes under the words plant passport PZ in the upper right hand corner. 14. Can the batch number be on a delivery note and all other information on the plant passport label attached to the plant? No, all of the required information must be on the plant passport. 15. Must each plant in a garden centre have a plant passport attached to it? No, however the garden centre must have a traceability system in place that can link each plant to the plant passport of the nursery that supplied the plant. It will be up to the operator to decide what traceability system to use and in some cases that may mean having an individual plant passport on each plant. 16. Do I need a plant passport for moving plants and plant products from one of my premises to another? Yes, if you move regulated material between your premises and they're located more than 400 kilometres apart, a plant passport is required to maintain traceability of the material. Movements of plants or plant products between two premises of the same registered operator, which are located less than 400 kilometres apart, are exempt from the requirement for a plant passport. For further information, please contact the Horticulture and Plant Health Division of the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine.